So when you work on coding projects, when you write software, you end up typing a lot, right? And more than likely you save your changes. So you make these changes, you save them, and then what do you do with them? Now, Git is a version control system that allows you to do stuff with your code. One of those things being sharing your code with other people um, using something called GitHub or basically a Git repository, a remote Git repository that allows you to share your code with everybody else, much like we do on our GitHub. This is actually where all of our code is for all of our projects. So you guys can look at it and read it and do all that stuff. But it's also useful when you're working in Teams or um, if you, for some reason, work on different computers and you need to be able to move them between those computers without really losing any progress. And that's the other key part of it is, since it's a version control system, it's really talking about the progress. So, so it monitors your progress with your code, assuming you do it regularly, assuming you use Git in the way it was meant to be used. That is, you make a change, you save it on your computer, but then you also save it in Git or add it to Git. Um, which we're going to show you here in just a moment. So we're really just covering the basics of Git, but it's very useful for you if you're going to be working in software. It's it's a very useful tool to learn about, um, even if you're just doing it yourself. So we're actually going to be building and creating a real repository in real time here so you guys can see exactly what it is that it looks like. So if we go to this page right here, and that's cur.co, S-O-K-4-Y-2, um, you're going to be redirected to our blog here on setup Git and a GitHub repo. This is going to be updated as needed. So if you find any errors or you have some suggestions, please let us know in the comments here. Again, this is very, very basic. So what you're going to want to do is pause the video right now and download Git. So you want to download and install Git and you can do it the easiest and preferred way is using the Heroku command line interface. So if you actually clicked on that, you would um, go ahead and jump into the Heroku command line interface, hit download and install. You can use homebrew or you can use the installers that they have for the various systems. So Heroku has that all set up for you and it's very easy and useful to do. So go ahead and do that now. And if you're more advanced, you might be able to use Homebrew or you can actually download an installer from Git itself. But the reason I like the Heroku command line interface is because then it also allows us to use Heroku, which is something you might deploy or send your code live with. And you can do that using Git as well. Okay, so this guide itself, we are gonna divert from it only a little bit because we're not gonna be using the project that this talks about, this blank Django project here. Instead, we're gonna be using a project called Try Django 1.11. So let's go ahead and open up our terminal and verify Git is installed. So if I do git dash dash version, I should see something like this. Like you might see a newer version and even if you have 2.11 or something like that, it's probably okay. Um, if there are any major changes, Git will probably warn you about them. But basically, you're going to want to make sure that you get somewhat of a recent version of Git, which you can find on this URL right here. Just go ahead and click that link. Okay, so we've opened it up and we verified installation. Now we need to initialize Git into the directory or folder that we want to track. So what that means is any folder that we want, we have to do this command called git init. Now it's so the entire system is not being tracked. It's only that folder and everything in that folder. So let's go ahead and change into our dev and we're gonna change into try Django 1-11. And what we see here is a folder with a bunch of changes or a bunch of items in with it. So what I can do is git init and hit enter. And this initializes an empty git repository in this area here. So it's actually its own directory, but if you list things out, you don't necessarily see it. So if I do ls-al or listing all things, we see it here. So I can also really simply and easily do remove-rf.git and that will remove my git repository so I can actually do git init again. So that's how you initial initialize git and that's how you remove it. Now do keep in mind, if you remove your git repository, 
it does remove the changes that you may have made. We're going to see that in just a moment and to go into more detail than just this guide here, but I do want to show you that that is a way to do it. So now I do say create a git ignore file, but we can also just do git status. This is another common thing that you'll do is git status. And you can see all of the untracked files. So these are the files inside of the directory I'm in, right? So that's everything that's in here. And when you see this slash, it includes everything inside of that directory as well. But there's a few things in here that we definitely don't want to send to any remote repository. One of them being Python itself um, or the executable. And we also don't want to send the bin, include any of the virtual environment stuff. We also might not want the pip self check. We realistically might not want our sublime project stuff. We might only want the SRC folder. And actually even in there, we might not want everything as well. So that's where this git ignore file comes in. That's why I tell you to create it before even checking the file status because it makes a lot of sense. So one of the ways we can do it is if I just copy this stuff here from echo all the way down to git ignore, I can just paste those in there and do git status now. And it added a git ignore file here, but I'm not actually looking at this git ignore file in any particular way that I like. So, and I also still see a few things in here that I don't necessarily want. So let's go ahead and open up this project, this try Django 1.11 project. Don't worry if you don't have this project on your computer, it's it's okay. We're just really focusing more on the git ignore stuff here. So this is the git ignore file that I've created and it all came from that echo call, right? So right here, it just grabbed all of these things and put it in the git ignore file. That's what's there. Now, this is an incomplete git ignore file for Python. We, might, we probably wanna have more things. So that's where um, I recommend the pre-built software get ignore files from actual GitHub itself. If you open that up, you see that this is it. So it actually has a ton in here. So if we search JavaScript or Java, um, actually there is no JavaScript one, but if we search Java, there's that. Python, there's a Python one. Um, let's try like Angular. Let's see if there's one for that. There's not. TypeScript, not for that. So like this is not gonna have everything, but if you have um, any interest in some of these git ignores, you can just search simply Python git ignore, and it'll likely give you one. And if I click on that, that's actually the git ignore file that was listed before. So this is the git ignore that we want to replace ours with. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to raw here and just copy this entire thing, go into sublime text, sublime text excuse me, and paste in the git ignore. So we're just really replacing what we already had in there. If you notice, I did have some of these things already in here, but I also had something called DS store and also probably a few other things. But what I really want to do is go back in here now and make sure our git ignore is saved and we do git status and notice that dot Python went away. So the bin and include we can now add to this. We just copy and paste it in here, save it get status again, those things go away. So I'm gonna also ignore the pip self check and do get status, there we go. So I'm actually gonna keep my sublime project stuff in there, but if I wanted to remove them, I don't actually have to write the name of the file in front. Instead, I can just do star, then dot the extension. So if I wanna ignore some sort of extensions, that's how you do it. So you do get status, and there you go, so that actually removes it. Of course, there's a lot more to it than just that, but I just wanted to make sure that you knew about this git ignore because you don't always want every file in there. Okay, so let's go back into that guide. And we've now created this git ignore, we've done some git status stuff. Um, now it's time to actually add these files and commit them. So th what happened here is I made some changes to files. This happens all the time. So even though it's my first set of changes, I've made some changes to my GitHub repository. Otherwise, I made some changes to some files, and now it's time to add them to my GitHub repository. So if I do git add dash dash all, this is just gonna add all of the changes. Um, yes, there's more like complicated ways on adding files and you can get more in depth than this, but this is a very simple way in a way that I use literally all the time. And then git commit message, and then we'll just say initial commit. So you definitely wanna add in a little message. 
um, to the GitHub uh, or the Git commit. So the commit meaning this is now doing all the changes and then all the future changes will be in a new commit. We'll see what that means in just a second. So I do go ahead and hit enter and it creates all these files. So it's actually in create mode. When I say create, it means that it just took the files that weren't originally in the Git repository and added them. Again, we'll see this in just a second too. Um, so now that we've got that, I can actually do git um, push origin master. This would be a way to actually push this to some sort of repository, right? But we don't actually have that repository yet, so let's actually create one. I'm gonna go into GitHub, and I'm already logged in, signed up and everything. I'm gonna go to this plus up here, create new repository. And this is creating that new repository. In my case, I'm gonna type out try Django 1.11. And of course, notice it it's gonna automatically change it. I'll worry about the description later. Um, and I'll worry about initializing things later too. So notice I say initialize repository with a readme, add a git ignore file, something that's fairly common, add a license. Again, not gonna worry about those things just yet. I'm gonna go ahead and create this repository. And now it actually gives me some ways of adding this to a local repository. Look at this, it says create a new repository on the command line. We already have done some of these things, right? So we have our initial init, um, we already did the init, and then git add readme. So it's saying create a readme file and then add that file. So this is how you actually add any given file. And then we do a commit, and then notice this push, git remote add origin. So it's adding this origin, so it's adding the repository. I'll explain that in a second too. And then it's pushing it to there. So all we're gonna be doing is we have an existing repository. That's what this is, right? This is an existing repository. If I try to push to origin master, I'll get something like this. So what this means is I need to actually add my GitHub repository to this repository. So that means I have to add a location for me to send my local one to this GitHub one, right? So I have to add it by doing this. So I go ahead and add this in. I hit enter and it's now created and added. Now granted, I might have to log in. So if you are doing this and you haven't set up your computer for Git yet, which you probably haven't, um, you might actually have to log into your user. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, git push-u origin master, I hit enter. And this is asking for my identity key. So I actually already have something in here for it, right? So I've already created a way to actually log into that. If you're curious on how to do that, just let us know in the comments below. Otherwise, it's gonna ask you for your username and password to GitHub, and then you're gonna push it on there, and then boom, you're done. So I actually push these things, and if I refresh in here now, there it is. All my code is actually on here just the way I wanted. So one thing I didn't put on here was a requirements.txt file in the root of the virtual environment. So down here, I didn't actually do that. I just put it inside of the SRC folder. So let's go ahead and do it inside of that root. I'm gonna activate the virtual environment. Again, this is just more specific to Django, so um, you don't have to do this, but we are just going to do it to show you how what happens. So pip freeze requirement.txt. So what did I just do? I created a new file and now I wanna add this file to my Git repository. And then I wanna add it to my remote Git repository, also known as my GitHub repository. And I'll just say Git status. Notice it says this file has been created. So add file, git add file. So I could do git add dash dash all or git add literally the file name right here. So I could just copy and paste that there. Two ways to add it and then we'll do git commit. Remember, we wanna have a message and we'll say added requirements.txt. And we now have one file changed, uh, eight insertions, meaning eight lines. So if we look at that requirements.txt file, there are those eight lines right there. So that's what that's saying. And then we do git push origin master. I hit enter, it's pushing it and it's completed. I refresh in here and there's my requirements.txt. Okay, so that's how you actually work with Git. Um, so the things that you're gonna wanna get in the behavior or the habit of is being able to do it every time you make significant changes. So if I'm gonna change this requirements file, for example, let's say for instance, I wanna get rid of um, gunicorn from here. So I got rid of gunicorn or I got rid of a line here and I do git status. Notice it's saying, 
uh, changes not staged for commit. So it's not ready to go live yet because I haven't added them. So I'll just do git add. And then again, I could do the file itself or just dash dash all. And then do git commit. And I'll say updated requirements for no G unicorn. And then one file changed, one deletion or one line was deleted. We do git push origin master. And that's it. So that is the actual process. So if I come back in here into this requirements, I'll see that it's no longer there. Okay, so, so why is it that we actually create some sort of um, line here or some history? Notice that once I changed the requirements, I made a message and the message is showing up right here, updated requirements for no G unicorn. Um, and I also do, if I do git log, I can see all of the changes from my repository. I can actually look at all of the commits that I've made. So I made my initial commit, I saved it, and then I pushed it. Well, in this case, it doesn't matter that I pushed it, but I saved it and it committed it and that's it. And then the next commit was added a requirements file and that's what this is representing. So you can actually, um, this is a little bit more advanced, but you can actually go back to your version of code here. So you can actually see what it looked like all of these commits ago. And that's actually what we do on our projects. So if you look at one of our older projects where it actually has lecture code, if you click on one of these, this is actually going to a previous commit. It's actually showing you what the code looked like at that time. That's what's really important about what's going on here. Um, so the final thing that I wanna do is actually get rid of this requirements.txt file. Um, because I already have it in my SRC file. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete it here and it's no longer there. And if I do git status, it'll say it deleted that file. We'll do git add dash dash all, git commit, delete, duplicate requirements file, git push origin master. So again, pushing the code, it's pushing the, it's actually pushing the GitHub repository to make sure that they're um, in sync with each other. And I refresh in here, now it's gone and everything is looking good. So of course this is a lot more in depth than what's on that um, actual page itself, but this is meant to be a guide or um, actual reference for using Git on this level. So if you have any questions on what we did here, please let us know. Otherwise we will see you in the next one.